Hello, welcome to Topper Machine. I'm Josh Topper. So what I have in front of me is the front end of a case tractor. And this is actually the part of the tractor that the front axle will go across this way and it pivots. Well, where the pivot pin goes, them holes are egg shaped out and there's a lot of slop there. So we got to line bore this thing. We'll do it on the horizontal boring mill and we'll make some bushings to pop in there. It will you know, be a light press fit and then we'll make uh, put the bronze bushings that uh, the customer supplied in there and he'll be ready to go back to work. Now, being a manual only machine shop and doing repair work like this, you see a lot of neat things and a lot of different things, but the one that really bothers me is when they bring you the nastiest, dirtiest, filthiest things in the world. Uh, they don't spend any time cleaning it. And uh, all of us that do this kind of work have seen this. And so now I get to spend time cleaning it and charge my hourly shop rate for that, which I hope, you know, if you guys see this and take work to other shops like that, you'll know that you should clean it first because the time that I spend cleaning it is time I have to bill. And it's, it's not a good job, it's not a fun job, but it also slows down the whole process of getting your work back to you. So with that, let's get cleaning. Well, I'd say we got this pretty clean. So um, again, don't bring your stuff to the machine shop completely filthy because we're going to have to clean it and we're going to have to charge you for it. It's just, uh, uh, I don't want that, that filth on my machines and getting into stuff and wearing it out. And I guarantee nobody else does. So clean your stuff first. Um, so with that, it's getting late in the day, but uh, we'll get it up on the boring mill and then I'll start setting it up tomorrow. So I got it up here on the mill and I am not sure how I am gonna support this yet and do everything. Um, I got our boring bar that I made here in last week's or the week before's video. Um, got the bearings on there, but I'm not sure how I'm gonna support everything yet. So we'll just do a time lapse and I'll figure it out as I go. And you know, with all this stuff, Every time I do this, it'll get better and, and I'll have more fixturing and stuff made. I've already got some stuff in mind to make, to make this better. Um, but we're not gonna have time for that on this job. So we're just gonna get this one done and then move on to the next stuff. Got it all set up here. Um, and I was gonna do a time-lapse on this, but the camera had a major malfunction and I lost all that. I don't know what's going on with my camera. I, I definitely need to upgrade um, because it's not picking up the light that's in here. It's really a dim and I gotta do, you know, fix that all in editing. So I'm looking at re for recommendations on a new camera and I don't like spending a lot of money on cameras, mostly because this is a very harsh environment. It's hard on stuff. Um, I'll probably stick with those cheap imitation GoPros for the close up stuff and these crappy cheap you know cameras for the for the other you know difficult stuff but i need something better for shots like this and, and setups and things like that i need a better camera so if anybody's got recommendations let me know um but we're all set up i use the threaded rods to support my bearings and i'm hoping that's going to work i you know i think it'll be pretty good um and we'll set up we'll bore the first one get our high speed steel cutter in there bore the first one and I'll take the cutter out and move it down and bore the second one. Um, and then we'll measure them and make bushings to match.
that went pretty good. Um, but I saw a little bit of deflection there while it was milling. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bump my cutter out just another maybe 10 thou. We'll just take a nice light cleanup pass and that should take care of anything that uh, was a problem there. And then we'll move our cutter down to the other end and bore that end as well. So let's get that done. That cleaned up a lot better. That uh, I didn't see any movement there at all. So that's what we'll do on the next one. We'll move their cutter down. We'll take our first pass and then we'll take a light cleanup pass. And then we'll measure the bores, make our uh, bushings to size, and we'll be good to go.
right, so it's all line board. Um, we just got to measure our bores now and make our make our bushings that go in there. Um, but should be absolutely true. So when we put the new bushings in and then put the the bushings that the factory bushings, the wear bushings in, um, everything should line up perfectly. But I need to go plow snow right now. Um, we got nailed with a snowstorm yesterday and, and more coming today and I want to get the first batch of it out of the way before, um, before there's too much to deal with. Uh, they're talking like over two feet coming so I got to get out there and plow snow for a little bit then I'll come back in and we'll get going on this. Just got back in from plowing snow. There's a lot of it out there and a lot more coming. Um, but I got the driveway opened up and my wife's parking spot, so she should be happy. Um, she's an RN. She doesn't get the uh, the luxury of taking a day off. Those nurses, they work way too much. Um, and they're underpaid and underappreciated. So if you know a nurse, thank her. Anyway, um, I got the bearings off and I... I just got to measure up our bore and then we'll take, um, I got some 1045 over at the Lion. We'll uh, chuck that up and we'll make our bushings to go in here that our new bushing or the factory bushing that goes in there will fit into. So I know you're all wondering why I'm not using coolant and the reason is is this video is being shot probably a month and a half before it's going up. Um, I just got the lathe in here a couple days ago and set up and running and I'm just trying to knock out these jobs as quick as I can. I'm waiting on tooling, I'm waiting on all kinds of stuff and it's just been Difficult getting things in, um, but coolant, I'm, I'm still kind of lost as to where to go because the coolant I always used to use was discontinued and it was the good stuff that didn't give me a rash. So trying to find something new that won't eat the paint and won't give me a rash is going to be um, kind of difficult. So that's why I'm not using coolant.
are right on the money with the caliper. Here's our bushing. And it'll just, just start. So, now here's the nice thing about a clutched lathe. Take my deburn tool here. I can 100% control my speed for stuff like that. I don't need to be reaching for a dial. I don't need to be fumbling with, uh, you know, gear changes. I just feather the clutch. So these are all done. I'm going to set them outside because it's 10 below zero. That's colder than the freezer gets. And uh, we'll get, let them cool for about a half hour to an hour. And then I'll bring the torch in and uh, we'll actually warm up the, the part there. And we'll slip these in. It should be about perfect. Okay, so I got the parts outside cooling. They're actually below zero right now. And this thing... It's 56 degrees, so we're going to heat this up to about 250, maybe 300. Just warm it up enough that it should expand some, and the, that'll slide right in. So let's get that going. Well, there you have it, all done, line board. Um, I did a shrink fit instead of a Dutch joint. I just figured this would be better, um, and it looks like it's gonna work out really well. They're in there tight, um, so they're not going anywhere. And I can get the bushings in there, and it can go back to the customer real quick here. Um, just another another example of what we can do on the horizontal boring mill. Just fun, fun job, fun uh, project, and glad it's done, and now I can move on to the next thing. So until next time, get out in your shop, and get it done right the first time.